I do love a comeback story, especially if it involves nature. By forest standards, at least compared to nearby Sherwood, the National Forest is brand new, having only been envisioned by a group at the Countryside Commission in 1987. Perhaps old to some, but the idea is younger than me. 25 years ago, the Midlands landscape was a very different scene. Scarred and blackened by coal, clay and lead mining, and the industry that goes along with such things. While this industry brought prosperity at the time, it left behind a grubby history of damage. To the mental health and the physical bodies of the workers themselves, as well as the surrounding landscape. Change was very much needed, as it still is in many industrially scarred areas of the world today. With nine million trees planted since, the forest zone now spans an impressive 200 square miles across parts of Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Staffordshire, providing a much needed home for wildlife and a welcoming place for people to relax, exercise and reconnect. It was the first forest to be created at such a scale in England for over a thousand years and has been successful largely due to a complex layering of strategy, hard work and the involvement of local people. The creation of the forest was rooted in the early 1990s, with the planting of the first celebratory trees and the creation of Rosliston Forestry Visitor Centre. The first National Forest Strategy and Business Plan was endorsed in 1994 and a year later the National Forest Company was formed and launched the National Forest Tender Scheme which was to be the funding mechanism that encouraged local communities, organisations and landowners to become a part of the project. This was the key in the idyllic vision becoming such a successful reality. Susan Bell, the first forest CEO, said the forest was created by passion and persuasion and a little bit of money. To date, the project has cost 60 million of public money. That may sound a lot, but consider that it's the equivalent of building just two miles of a three-lane motorway. 200 miles of future-proofing, improved well-being and tourism is a lot of bang for our buck. It's easy to write off industrialised landscapes as ruined beyond all repair, but it's places like this that tell a different story. Whilst visiting, I stayed at the National Forest Youth Hostel, which is conveniently placed to access a good number of walking and cycling routes. In keeping with the future mindset of the area, the hostel boasts a variety of environmentally friendly features, including harvesting rainwater for the toilets and sustainably sourced local timber for the biomass heating system in winter. It's always great to see some of the many sustainable options now available to us being utilised. The path leading directly from the hostel car park brings you straight into the award-winning Moira Junction, an extremely pretty and diverse young section, a short distance from the famous Conker's Discovery Centre. I wasn't sure what to expect, perhaps rows of uniform young trees, but the areas I saw were much more naturalised and blended than that. It had been beautifully done. Nature inserted and supported just enough to let it do its own thing. If I compare the young areas to the ancient, there appears to be a lot more variety of plants present, though much of the differences are unseen. New trees are important, but old ones are more valuable than we can imagine. By linking old and new, we can allow the mycorrhizal network to expand to provide the support that the new plantations benefit from. With wildlife corridors, we prevent the problems of isolating species, which would inevitably lead to their decline. And every tree planted or saved serves to strengthen the area's climate immunity. The preface of the first business plan declared, the national forest is a symbol of hope for the nation. The same is true for every tree that's planted on this planet. Perhaps somewhere nearby, the next major oak is sprouting. 
Work continues with the aim of linking Sharnwood and Needwood, two ancient forests, and I look forward to revisiting as it continues to grow. Nature can be healed, and can heal us if we let it. <laughs>